Shawn Michaels must have developed Alzheimer's because for the second week in a row he forgot how to cook. Welcome back to Fall Wrestling, it's down. Sci-Fi Massacre 2.0, week two of it. Despite going up 14%, it's the second lowest show of the year. But we've already talked about that. It's time to see how it got to that with the quarter ratings. Are you ready? Yeah, let's see who contributed to the shite rating that is NXT. Oh yeah, 6th of August 2024, Great American Bash, night. Two! Quarter one, eight o'clock date 15, we had Hank Walker, Tank Ledger, video recap to kick off the show. Holy moly, what a great way to kick off the show with Pete Dunne taking on Trick Williams as well. This did 504,000 viewers with a 198,018 to 49, whipping out a 0.15 in 18 to 49. Hank Walker, Tank Ledger, that should be nowhere fucking near kicking off the show. I don't think those guys should be on this show. Never mind kicking off the show. No, how do you actually kick off with those two, like a video? I can't even, like, can even tell you who they are. That's two very similar sounding names, like Ledger, Walker, Tank, Hank. <sighs> Wank, I mean, that's what it is. It's shite. It's no good. Yeah, and then Pete Dunn, Trick Williams, so that's what it is. We then move on to quarter two, 8.15 to 30, continuation of uh, Dunn Williams. Then we get NXT locker room backstage, get Tatum Paxley backstage, Nathan Fraser and Ethan Page backstage, and then the beginning of Kalani Jordan versus Paxley. This went up 4% to 5, 2, 3. And then quarter 3, 8.30 to 8.45, Paxley versus Jordan continued. Post-match with Wendy Chu, got the quarter catch crew, the D'Angelo family, Fraser and Axiom backstage again. This time... A 13% increase in viewership, 16% increase in key demo, and for some reason, this was the highest viewed quarter of the show. Not a lot on it, but there you go, highest viewed quarter nonetheless. Yeah, you look at it, it's not the best, I have no idea. I mean, is this when people finally find the sci-fi channel after half an hour? I, I don't know, but it's actually weird this went up 13%, because from here, apart from the overrun, it is red. All I see is red, because quarter four, 8.45 to 9 o'clock. We had Dunn, Williams backstage angle, Page took on Oramenza, and this went down 3%, down to 574,000 viewers, down 4% in 18 to 49, down to 220,000 viewers, and 0.17. So, this is your champ. This is Ethan Page, the guy that drew the lowest few clip on the, I mean, I say on the show, of the week. I doubt any, I doubt doubt he's going to upload a clip with worse views. What no, is, it's embarrassing. Like, the guy shouldn't be champion. How, how, no, how is he champion, by the way? How do they not realise, like, oh... Like, that's what I said in the video earlier, right? The championship by itself is a draw, correct? Like, people will tune into the clip of the because of the championship. The fact that 46,000 people can't even be fucking bought, like, that's it. It's like, what's he going to do when he's not involved with a world title? He should, he should be fucking released. He's been in the company two months. He should be gone already. Bogging numbers. Yeah, it's not great, is it? This is odd. This is Cody Rhodes' wee body for AEW. It's embarrassing. No, I'm convinced, man. Put me or you in with the NXT Championship, we'd be doing bigger fucking numbers. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's move on to quarter five, shall we? Nine o'clock to 9.15. We had Page versus Mensa continued. MSK backstage promo. NXT locker room backstage angle. And then Joe Coffey versus Joe Henry. This went down 1% in fuel ship, but went up 5% in key demo. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Down to 569. Quarter 6, Coffrey versus Henry continued. Then we got a Henry live promo, followed by a Chase U angle. This went down 6% to 535. Not great here. Quarter 7, NXT locker room angle. We get Sinclair versus Kendall Gray. Javon Evans video. MSK backstage angle. Down 6%. Quarter 8, 9.45, 10 p.m. We get Oberfemi and D'Angelo family angle. Then we get Axiom and Fraser versus MSK. This went down 8% to 467,000. And then the overrun from 10 o'clock to 10.05. Axiom and Fraser versus MSK continued post-match with Trey Miguel. This went up 13% in viewership and went up 15% in key demo. Overrun had the highest key demo of the show with 238,000. And, you know, the 13% increase for quarter eight is a big increase. That tells me that the, the overrun numbers, because something was coming on after NXT and it gained a lot of fuels, if, 
if the overrun is the same as quarter eight, then it just makes no sense for the overrun to do so much better. If people were invested in, in the content in the overrun, then they would also be invested in quarter eight, but they weren't. Quarter eight lost eight percent. Quarter eight was the lowest quarter of the show. Tony Khan must be crying because this has to be like the first overrun I've ever seen that's actually done better. I mean, look, I mean, actually delivering the best 18 to 49, which is bizarre. So, again, really poor ratings. I mean, under 500k for a quarter, man, that's bogging. But there's no excuse for the sci fi channel. We're seeing Raw produce good numbers and no excuse for the Olympics because we're seeing SmackDown. So, what is Shawn Michaels' excuse? NXT just sucks. Isn't that's it? the excuse, it's yeah. Not the, it's not an excuse, it's just a fact, isn't it, really? Yeah. But I ain't telling you anything. You, you know, already know. know. It you fucking know. sucks, yo. Sure, yeah, I would say. We see, like, caught months ago. We watched NXT live a few times. You know, for in long periods, we did, didn't we? Yep. See, no, I, I wouldn't be caught dead watching NXT. Damn. The clips are fucking bad enough. Anyway, guys, that is it. Smackdown tonight. Are you ready for? A... Why did they change the theme, by the way? Because. We... Saying are you ready for a good time and saying no, it's going to be a bad time. It's just a great wee gimmick to have. But anyway, 6th of August, NXT quarter wrapped up.